Okay, just going to do a video addressing the twisting of Romans chapter 14 verse 5 to try to justify celebrating the Illuminati occult Jesuit high day of Saturnalia, aka Christ Mass or Christmas as it's commonly known. Okay, what happens is that, is that carnal Christians and also false converts like ripping Romans 14 5 out of context to try to say that Christmas is a liberty. And that we can just pick any holiday we want. We can have, we can esteem one day above another. Basically, what they're saying is that we can just pick any day we want, regardless of its heathen origins, and esteem it above another because hey, we have uh, liberty to do that. Well, let's actually look at what, Ro what Romans fourteen five is saying. Okay, the context of Romans fourteen five is not in any way saying that we get to just observe any custom we want, regardless of its origins. The context of Romans fourteen five is about esteeming a day unto the Lord. Christmas has nothing to do with the Lord Jesus Christ. Christmas is a Roman Catholic Jesuit holiday. And I do find it quite ironic how, how Brian Dellinger is so militantly against the Catholic Church, meanwhile he's observing one of their customs. It, it just boggles my mind. Him, him and his followers are so vehemently, right, and rightfully so, they're so vehemently against the satanic Jesuit cult and the satanic Roman Catholic Church, yet they're vehemently defending one of their customs, Christmas. Interesting how it goes there. But let's look at Romans 14, 5 in context. Romans chapter 14, verses 5 to 6. Let's turn there. Romans 14, verses 5 to 6. Every one, every man esteemeth one day above another, another esteemeth every day alike. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind. And they stop right there and say, see, be fully persuaded in his own mind. We can just observe any custom we want. We just got to be persuaded in our own mind. Well, by that logic, we have the, that means we have the satanic philosophy of Aleister Crowley. Do what that will, it should be the whole of the law. Okay? Is that what it's teaching there? Because by that logic, it's teaching the satanic philosophy of Aleister Crowley. No, let's keep reading. Verse 6. He that regardeth the day, regardeth it unto the Lord. And he that regardeth not the day, to the Lord he doth not regard it. He that eateth, eateth to the Lord. For he that giveth God thanks, and he that eateth not to the Lord, he eateth not, and giveth God thanks. What's it saying in context? The day is esteemed to the Lord. It's not saying we can just pick any custom we want. I mean, by that same logic, we can celebrate Halloween then. You know, if, if our personal preference is what it comes down to. And I know Brian and his followers will say, well, we don't, we're not saying personal preference, but what it really comes down to is that by ripping this verse out of context, it's basically your personal preference. And by that logic, if we're going to be consistent with this kind of logic, if we're going to be consistent with the logic of, well, I can celebrate it if I just slap Jesus Christ on it. Well, that by that same logic, if we're going to be consistent, then we can celebrate Halloween then. As long as we just slap Jesus Christ on it. We can observe any occult, witchcraft holiday if we just slap Jesus Christ on it. I mean, I'm not saying that's, I'm not saying that's what they're saying, but if we're going to be consistent with that logic, that's where it leads to. Okay. But on this thing of esteeming a day to the Lord, okay, because holiday and holy day are two different things, two very different things. There are holy days and holidays. A holy day is a day esteemed to the Lord. A holiday is a man-made tradition like Christmas, which comes from the Catholic Church and the Jesuits, by the way, as well. Uh, I've said that before. Exodus chapter 12, verse 14. Turn there. Exodus chapter 12, verse 14. And this day shall be unto you for a memorial, and ye shall keep it a feast to the Lord throughout your generations. He shall keep it a feast by an ordinance forever. Exodus chapter 12, verse 42. I'm not going to give too much of my commentary. I'm just going to let the verses speak for themselves. Exodus 12, 42. It is a night to be much observed unto the Lord for bringing them out from the land of Egypt. This is that night of the Lord to be observed of all the children of Israel in their generations. And finally turn to Zechariah chapter 7, verses 4 to 6. We're seeing a consistent theme of these days are unto the Lord. Zechariah chapter 7, verse 4 to 6. Then came the word of the Lord of hosts unto me, saying, Speak unto all the people of the land, and to the priests, saying, When ye fasten and mourn in the fifth and seventh month, even though seven years did ye at all fast unto me, even to me, and when ye did eat, and when ye did drink, uh, did not ye eat for yourselves, and drink for yourselves? Okay, what's this consistent theme we're seeing over and over again? A holy day, a day, a day that is ordained by God, is observed unto the Lord. And we, we compare that with Romans 14, 6, the day that we're esteeming above another is unto the Lord. Because obviously we don't keep the Sabbath today. We're not required to. Our, our rest is in Jesus Christ. Matthew chapter 11, verses 28 to 30 gives a good foreshadowing of that. Our rest is in Jesus Christ. We don't keep the Sabbath today. You know, we don't observe the Jewish feasts. 
Okay, but what is this simply showing? Because people are going to, because I know that some of the hyper dispensationalists might say, well, that's just the Old Testament. That doesn't, that's not for Christians. Well, for those who might say that, oh, that's for the Old Testament Jews, I would just simply say, amen to that. That was written to Old Testament Jews. But don't forget what Paul wrote in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 to 17. Let's turn there. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verses 15 to 17. And that from a child thou hast known the holy scriptures, which are able to make thee wise unto salvation through faith, which is in Christ Jesus. All scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be perfect, thoroughly furnished unto all good works. Amen. Those verses were written to Old Testament Jews. I've never denied that. But all scripture is given by inspiration of God, and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. And what's the instruction in righteousness and, you know, reproof we can get from those verses? That a holy day is a day ordained by God and is observed unto the Lord. Okay, Christmas has nothing to do with Jesus Christ. It was never ordained by God. It was never unto the Lord. It was a Illuminati, Luciferian, pagan, Catholic high day. That was, it basically was a Saturnalia, essentially. It was winter solstice, and the Catholics borrowed that and just repackaged it. They Christianized paganism. That's all they did. And basically, keeping the, like I said, keeping the Sabbath and the feast days are not required for Christians today. But in a context of instruction, righteousness, and reproof, it shows that holy days were directed unto the Lord. They are dedicated unto the Lord. Okay? They were not just any kind of custom of their choosing, regardless of their heathen origins. So when you rip Romans 14.5 out of context to try to prove that Christmas is a liberty, uh, you're twisting scripture. Maybe ignorantly, but you're still twisting scripture. Christmas is not a liberty. You do not have liberty to observe a heathen custom and just slap Jesus Christ on it. Okay, the liberty they're esteeming one day above another is esteeming it unto the Lord. Plus, there's no scriptural evidence that ever says Jesus Christ was born on December 25th. There's not one piece of historical or scriptural evidence that points to that. So anyway, don't be deceived. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with all the brethren. Goodbye. Thank you.